Happy Sunday, all you mentees. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition. And join me for my advanced look at the X-Men Inferno Prologue Omnibus from Marvel Comics. So, let's get started. Welcome back, everybody. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and the book market on December 7th. So it will be available everywhere, whether it's CheapGraphicNovels.com, Tales of Wonder, In Stock Trades, your local comic book shop, Dying Breed Collectors, Waltz Comic Shop, Organic Price Books, wherever you get your books, everywhere it's going to be available on the same day. Now, what we're looking at here is the X-Men Inferno Prologue, and this is the first time this book has been released in omnibus format, or rather with the omnibus label, because it has been previously released with the exact same content in this edition right here to the left-hand side. That's the oversized hardcover, which we're going to do a comparison here in a little bit and look at the internal pages, but it was not officially an omnibus and now it's officially being reprinted as an omnibus uh this book had been out of print for a long time so marvel decided to bring it back in the print as a matter of fact it was funny uh david gabriel was in the one of our saturday streams and didn't believe that this was an actual book until i had to uh my wife the astonishing melanie got this off the shelf and i said see this is a thing and he's like oh okay that needs to be reprinted and that's pretty much how that happened so uh we're gonna be taking a look at this but before um, I did want to state that this is the direct market cover by Arthur Adams. And then to the left-hand side here, this will be the standard edition cover by Mark Silvestri. The spine will look like this, except this will be the picture on the spine on the standard edition. And then the Arthur Adams art right here from, uh, I think that's annual number 12. And then the back of the book uh, with this wonderful piece by Steve Lytle, who passed away earlier, I think, in January of this year. Now, I've heard a lot of complaints about prices going up, and that is true. Prices for books are gonna go up. It's inevitable. There's no way to stop it. But this is pretty interesting. My copy, my first printing of this OHC, is $125 retail price. The new printing is $100. So for the people that missed out on this or are new to collecting X-Men Omnis, you're getting this at a better price than the first printing, which, hey, kudos to you for waiting or not collecting back then. Regardless, you're getting a better deal. Now, everything looks the same here. The font is a little bit different, of course. Uh, what it collects looks like it's a little bit smaller. Marvel Team, the ISBN, it's a little bit smaller than what they had here. Uh, but the picture looks about the same. If anything, it's a little bit bigger here. Now, under the dust jacket, it's that image right there of the X-Men versus the Reverse that will appear, like I said, on the spine. And it's on the spine here under the dust jacket in the direct market. And then the back is the full-blown Steve Lytle picture right here of the X-Factor versus the Avengers. All right, let's get this omnibus, this new printing, opened. And then we'll do a comparison with the internal pages. Okay, let's get this open. There's your end sheets right there. And then this art from Brett Blevins featuring Magic versus Forge. There is a reason they're fighting. One of my favorite stories of all time with the X-Men, Earthfall right there. Here are the credits, Lee Simonson, Chris Claremont, Tom DeFalco, Walter Simonson, and Mark Grunewald. And then all the artists right there. So this kind of gives you a quick recap as to what's happened before. Now, in the X-Men reading order, which I've done, if you want to click on the videos above, uh... This takes place after Fall of the Mutants. So something big happens to all the teams, whether it was X-Men, whether it was X-Factor, or New Mutants, during the crossover event Fall of the Mutants, which really wasn't a crossover with all of the characters working together. It was more of an inside event between the individual titles. So X-Men were dealing with the adversary. X-Factor was dealing with the betrayal of one of their own. Um, actually, two betrayals and Apocalypse, and then the New Mutants were dealing with the animator and the death of one of their friends. So that's what this is. This is the aftermath. Now, for a lot of people, and I understand, this isn't the greatest era of X-Men. I'm just going to pass through here through some of Walter Simonson's amazing art. This isn't the greatest era of X-Men because the X-Men, something happens in the Fall of the Mutants where it's almost like they're starting over again. They're starting over with a brand new life. An offer is made to them, and the world doesn't see them the same. 
And to me personally, Uncanny Omar, this is my favorite era of X-Men because they are so broken, so torn away from the world, so far, far and distant from everything they've known that they have to find a new home. And it's all done through, well, Roma, who plays a big role in The Fall of the Mutants. And like I said, this isn't to be read until after you've read Fall of the Mutants. And without... Yeah, I'm not going to give any spoilers away. But they do find a new home. Here's some more Walter Simonson. We have the first appearance of Infectia. And, by the way, this is during the time when Angel is Archangel. Beast has a human form, but through these pages you'll see him returning to the blue hairball Beast. This, oh, this issue right here, this is issue 228 of Uncanny X-Men. This one right here is so phenomenal. Now, there's a reason why Kitty Pride is crying here. They added this page from Marvel Age Annual number 3. But this letter, this particular issue, to me, was one of the best standalone issues of X-Men. Written by Chris Claremont, drawn by Rick Leonardi. You have inks by Terry Austin. And I absolutely love this issue. To me, it was a good end chapter to what happened previously and then we get the beginning of something new so this is the reintroduction of some of these characters that had appeared through the pages but these are the reavers who will play a big menacing role through these pages of uncanny x-men some of these characters you've seen before uh, they were how do i put it human beings that got altered and here we have the team of x-men and this is what is known as the Outback Years, when the X-Men resettle in Australia. They meet Gateway, and the team is now made up of this gentleman right here. Longshot, Dazzler, Psylocke, Colossus, Wolverine, Storm leading the team, Havoc, and Rogue. And then there's one more person who plays an important role uh, between everything, and that is this lady right there, Madeline Pryor. A lot of secrets will be coming up throughout this particular omnibus that leads into the next one, which is Inferno. So in chronological order, this does take place between Fall of the Mutants and Inferno. Hence the name Inferno Prologue. We are actually uh, a little behind the scenes when I suggested reprinting this. I said, you know, it would be interesting if Marvel did this thing where they decide to call a book something different. Like, uh, I think... The direct market should be called the Fall of the Mutants Aftermath, and then the standard edition should be called the Inferno Prologue, just to see, you know, which story people... I would have preferred the Fall of the Mutants Aftermath, because that's what it feels like. Uh, people are dealing with their own issues. Here's the New Mutants issue. So they are broken up into arcs in chronological order. I think this is a great way. I've read this so many times, and this is the exact same way that I've read the issues when I was reading them individually and going back and reading my X-Men. Uh, there is one amazing story in here from New Mutants that was so groundbreaking, and that is issue number 64. It is a little bit of a spoiler, so I'll before I talk about it, I'll, I'll warn you again. But in the aftermath of Fall of the Mutants, we have this story of Amara right here, Magma, and the Hellions, because she's part of them now. She left the New Mutants, and then we have a story featuring Magic, which was a flashback story with her and Kitty Pride. And this is really cool that they went back to it because this is a part of a Chris Claremont story that he told, if you read in the pages of New Mutants, uh, Volume 1 of the Omnibus. But actually, this is the plot from Chris Claremont and Louise Simonson, thus the script. And you have some fill-in artists. And then we get the after aftermath of The Fall of the Mutants, which, like I said, before I talk about it, I just want to warn you, spoilers, because it is something big that happens in Fall of the Mutants. So if you don't want to know anything, look at the timestamps below where I go back to the non-spoilery part. And that is, of course, for you people that don't care about spoilers or, you know, have read this many times, issue number 64, The Resurrection of Cypher. As a kid, this story freaked me the hell out. Because you have Warlock, who's an alien, a mutant from space, that doesn't understand the concept of death. And Cypher, this character right here, Doug Ramsey, got killed in the pages of Fall of the Mutants right there. And, you know, he got shot. He was, it was such a wrong way. Like, his friends didn't even notice he died. That's how rough it was. So, this is Rain reliving it through the Danger Room sequence. Right now, Magneto is the leader of the team. But they're all dealing with his death their own way. 
having to come home and telling Magneto, oh man, that was a rough issue. But this right here, where Warlock doesn't understand the concept of death, and he resurrects his friend, and the rest of the New Mutants are like, you can't do that, Warlock. What are you doing, man? This is messed up. This is dark. And he didn't mean it that way. But this right here is one of the most powerful issues of New Mutants by Louise Simonson that I've read. You know, a lot of people love Chris Claremont, and I do too. I love Chris Claremont's run on New Mutants. And it seems like, you know, people don't remember that much of Sweezy's run on New Mutants. But this is such a powerful issue. Brett Blevins is the ongoing artist. All right, let's get back to the non-spoilery part so everybody else can join us. All right, just showed off some of that artwork from the issue I was talking about, issue 64. And welcome back, everybody. This right here shows what's happening to Ileana. She's changing. She's becoming darker. She's getting closer to the dark arts. She goes after this character right here named Forge, who she blames for something horrible happening to the X-Men. And again, that can be found in the pages of New... Or, I'm sorry, Fall of the Mutants. And that again, drawn by the phenomenal Brett Blevins. Now, let's get to this story arc right here. I swear this is just supposed to be an overview. I didn't mean to break down the stories, but I can't help it sometimes relive my X-Men. This is Earthfall, one of the most underrated stories in X-Men. I never hear anybody talk about, but I always put it in my top 10. This is a group of mutants that are taken over by the Brood. The Brood, the Sleesoids that appear in the pages of Uncanny during Dave Cockrum's return. Uh, Paul Smith brought them back. They haven't been seen for a while. These are ones that were a little yeah a lot based on the xenomorphs from alien but they take over a group of mutants and the way that this is written the way that this is done is so badass we get some iconic moments in here drawn by mark silvestri so not only do the x-men have to fight a group of brood but they're also mutant powered brood that's badass and then we get this iconic cover to issue 234 Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. And yes, that's that's called Earthfall. They've printed it before in trade paperback many years ago. Uh, here's a, actually, I think this is Colleen Doran, if I'm not mistaken. Pinned up by Colleen Doran. And then we get to the X Factor Annual right here by Louise Simonson and Terry Schumacher. Shoemaker. I don't think anybody corrected me on how to pronounce that. We get all the other stories in there. And then we get some more New Mutant stories. This is all part of the Evolutionary War. And then we get, of course, the classic Evolutionary War annual number 12 right here, drawn by the phenomenal Arthur Adams with inks by Bob Wysick. So, again, this is the X-Men living, starting over a new life in the Outback. And, of course, all of this... I think that's enough. I talked about uh, the stories enough. All right. I was going to say all of it starts leading into the next story arc, which is Inferno, but I can't do this overview justice without talking about this particular story right here. This is one that's plotted by Tom DeFalco and Louise Simonson, again, who was writing X-Factor at the time. She supplies the script. But you have the wonderful artwork in here of Steve Lytle, who, I, like I mentioned, passed away again um, in January of this year. And the guy had just been recently working on things. Anyway, I loved his art. He was one of my favorite cover artists on the classic X-Men run or X-Men classic. And then it, I was always happy to see his internal stuff. I didn't know later on. I think he had drawn issues of uh, Legion of Superheroes. But this is some of his internal artwork. Then we get a couple of issues of X-Men that were previously collected. This is the introduction of this country known as Genosha. And... These were previously collected in the Extinction Agenda OHC. There were some double dipping because that OHC came out first, was printed before this particular story, this OHC. So all these stories, you have the uh, introduction of Gossamer, who's a new character to New Mutants. You have Magic dealing with her own issues. You have something going on with Maddie in the pages of X-Men. Oh, I'm so glad they included this Marvel Age annual in here with pages of Wolverine when he started getting his own solo story. Artwork, of course, by Big John Buscema. And then you get Marvel Fanfare number 40 collected in here. This uh, particular story with Storm and Mystique. Now, as far as the extras, and I was saying that all of this starts leading into Inferno. The big story arc that happens next. And that is your actual crossover event. Whereas... Mutant Massacre, Fall of the Mutants, each individual title was doing its own thing. Inferno felt like, holy crap, all the teams are meeting up, and this is going to be amazing. 
Oh, I'm glad they printed this. I forgot that they were doing the official Marvel Index to X-Men. This is the Earthfall cover I was talking about. Interesting to see um, Sim up there. And then there's the Brood. Ian Churchill did that cover. You get concept design, some artwork here of just pencils and inks. And then that's it. Let's talk about the binding. This particular omnibus was printed at the iMac printer in Turkey. So the paper quality is a little bit thinner than my OHC, which was printed about seven years ago. Um, so it, it's not that big of a deal, but there are some pages where you can kind of see the frames from the opposing page come through a little bit. Again, keep in mind, I have both of my LED lights pointing at the book, so not everybody really reads like this. Most people usually read sitting on a couch next to a lamp or something, I assume, or outside on the beach. But I did want to point that out, that you can see some of the frames coming through from the opposite page. I've seen worse. I've seen thinner paper, but I always like to point that out. As far as the book laying over the way that it lays over, here it is towards the front of the book, the middle. So here's some good spread pages right here. And then towards the back of the book. Now, when I'm going to do a comparison, I noticed something on this printing that seems off. Uh, but unfortunately, it's in that issue of New Mutants that has spoilers, unfortunately. And fortunately, those mistakes are only found in that particular issue. And it's just a couple of them um, in this particular printing of the Omnibus. And again, I will let you know before I do a comparison of that particular issue. But let's do a comparison of these books. Okay, up at the top is the original OHC. And down here is the new Omnibus. And this is the way that it's laying over. You see a little bit more of a curve here in this printing. This one was printed at the Donnelly printer. Whereas this one's just kind of sitting out there without a curve. So, printed at the iMac printer. Paper quality, this is a little bit thicker than this here. Not necessarily a lot. You know, I've, I've felt thicker. Uh, please don't take that out of context. Uh, as far as the colors... Colors are honestly a little more vibrant here in the newer printing. Just a little, I mean, a slight bit vibrant in the newer printing. Page count is identical. Both of these Omnis collect X-Factor 27 through 32. X-Factor annual number 5. Let's look at another page really quick. Uncanny X-Men 228 to 238. So all of that leading into Inferno. New Mutants 62 through 70. New Mutants annual number 4. Here, let's fast forward a little bit. Moving on to issue 228 of Uncanny X-Men. Speaking of Uncanny X-Men, this also collects Uncanny X-Men Annual 12 and then material from Marvel Age Annual number 4 and Marvel Fanfare 40. That's what's collected in this particular omnibus. Uh, the book has 824 pages. Now, again, I want to stress the fact that when I mentioned the paper quality being a little bit thinner, not that much thinner than this original printing of the OHC, is see, you can see the frame from the opposite page coming through the white here in both of these equally. There's no difference. Now, I am going to talk about this uh, particular issue, so be warned if you don't want any spoilers, maybe stay away. But I did find something, and that something is that in the new printing for about four pages, because they're all part of the same sheet, the black ink is faded on just those sheets so let's take a look and like i mentioned it only happens in these four pages but here it is it's page 209 this freaking awesome issue in this iconic moment you can see the blacks are faded out the colors are still there and they're very vibrant but it's just that the black tone is faded kind of get a better idea get closer to the lighting here you go so here's what uh, original printing here of the OHC and then what the new printing looks like and you can tell right I mean even by just looking at this printing that something's a little bit off because this page looks okay so you know that those pages are the same as these and then we get to this particular pages and they're faded out both of them uh, and it's like I said it's just the blacks and it's because it's the same sheet so we have one more, and that is this page right here, 216. Uh, and this is the way that it's supposed to look. Now, 
I don't know if, like, in Amazing Spider-Man reprint, the Omnibus number three, if it's going to be just my copy. I haven't heard anybody complain about it. Uh, or if it's going to be all of them, if some of them are going to be better, if some of them are going to be worse. But I did want to point that out. But just wanting to let people know. Now, let's get back to the non-spoilery part. All right, here are some other pages, just to do a comparison. Again, the colors look a little more vibrant. Outside of those four pages, honestly, the entire omnibus looks a little more vibrant, slightly more than the OHC. So I noticed something in this particular issue of X-Men when looking at it last night, but its I don't think it's the same issue that was in that one spoilery issue of New Mutants, and that's this. You can tell the colors are more vibrant in this, which is not the case for the entire omnibus, because like I mentioned, with the exception of those four pages, they're usually more uh, vibrant in this particular edition. But in for these pages here, they seem to be faded out a little more. And then again, how the covers look. They have a frame around them. Uh, but that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor who's having a Black Friday sale starting on Thanksgiving. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for your mentees. If you're a first time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for U.S. customers only. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you're keeping your X-Men Inferno OHC, uh, if you are picking this up, which cover you're going to go for, if you read the stuff, honest opinion, what did you all think of this era of X-Men? Did you enjoy it as much as I did? Anyway, Leave those comments down below. If you have any more questions, leave those questions down below. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day, sometimes two or three. And ring that bell for notifications. More importantly, all of you stay healthy. Stay safe out there. Much love.